Hello, everyone. Hello. Last talk of the first day of MCOT. It's yeah, I didn't quite realize honor. we were the last talk. That's, uh, that's, that's questionable. Questionable, questionable ordering, Peter, wherever you are. Um, but yeah, what's up, Jimmy? Cool, dude. Let's get started. Let's yeah. Do it. Uh, like, let's just do a quick round of intros for folks, and then we can kind of dive into what you guys are doing over at Forefront, and then we, we're going to talk a little bit more about social tokens and incentive to, uh, tokenomics and uh, contributor incentives. So cool, cool, it's cool. Pretty fun. Um, yeah, so for those who I haven't met, I'm Jihad. Um, I, oof. so in a past life, I was like deep in the creator economy. I ran a creator growth agency. We helped YouTubers between like half a million and 10 million subscribers grow their audiences, make more money. It was really, really fun. Um, at some point along that journey, I, I started hearing the first whispers of social tokens and NFTs in the creator space. Um, I thought that stuff was way more fun than the stuff that I was doing, so I started going down the rabbit hole and pitching all of the creators we were working with on this stuff. And at the time, I sucked at explaining it. I still do, kind of. Um, and they just weren't super receptive, just it was, it was so early. Um, so I kind of decided to step away from that and, and go down the crypto rabbit hole. Um, from there, I just started talking to a bunch of people and got involved with a bunch of DAOs, um, one of which was Forefront, and kind of carved a role for myself there pretty early on alongside Carlos, who was the founder. Um, and yeah, so we can, we can dig into to what Forefront is, but you want to, anything you want to add there or about yourself or no? I can talk a little bit about myself. Go for it. <laughs> uh, so hey guys, I'm Jim. Uh, I uh, do a bunch of things. I'm in a few DAOs like Index Co-op. Uh, I started a few DAOs, one called Manga DAO, where we're decentralizing uh, anime and manga production. I'm also in Scribe DAO, which is kind of like a uh, distributed, like, um, kind of like note-taking service. Okay. Um, and uh, is that better? Cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I've, I've just been in the DAO space for uh, quite some time, in crypto for about five years. So uh, excited to be uh, talking to my friend Jihad there about, uh, about Forefront. Heck yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, so <laughs> what is Forefront? Let's, uh, let's just yeah. get that out of the bat. That's a great question because like, I, I, I specifically asked Jimmy to ask this question because we get this from like contributors in Forefront as well. Um, so Forefront started off as what Carlos described as like a social token aggregator, right? So there were, there were two elements on day one, um, or at least like within the first month. There was A, a profiles and marketplace page, which took all the like major social tokens at the time and sort of just had like a ranking of them based off of volume, price, et cetera. Um, and then profile pages for each of those social tokens talking about like what the community is, what it represents, who's involved, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then soon after, the, there was the launch of like the Forefront newsletter, which sort of just aggregated all the key insights and essays and podcasts and, and cool stuff that was happening throughout the space on a weekly basis. Um, so that was, that was Forefront on day one, and we kind of like stuck with that, that tagline of we are the social token like insight aggregator. Um, and once we dropped Forefront token in April, it became very, very clear that like as we decentralized, there were so much emerging throughout the community that like did not fall into that bucket of like social token aggregator, right? A, because like the term social token is, is super, super ambiguous and we can get to that. Um, but B, like social tokens are directly related to a lot of the things that we're talking about like at this conference, DAOs, NFTs, and, and some may argue that they're, they're like very much overlapping if not the same thing in some capacities, right? Um, so we, we kind of leaned into that thesis and people came and were excited about like, yo, like I want to start like creating content for Forefront. So we started a writer's program and people were able to come in and write essays like who were, who were working in DAOs or experts in the social token space and, and, and contribute for Forefront token. So others were like, yo, like I want to, um, like we, we have like various projects on like the education side of things to like get people into the social token space from Web2. Um, and we kind of just like leaned into whatever, wherever the energy was based off of the mission and based off of the, the values that we were starting put about, putting out there. Um, in the last month, we have reevaluated that initial tagline and that initial mission. And we've sort of landed on the fact that Forefront has become what I am really, really excited to say is like the port of entry for Web3. Um, it is a community where a ton of people are coming in the door who are crypto curious, 
um, who have heard about social tokens, heard about NFTs, heard about DAOs, but like aren't quite sure what's going on there, um, and are able to like participate in a community that is making educational content, that is creating opportunities to get people in the door, and then either like stick around and like stick around the port and help others along the way to like, like get onboarded, or like use it as a as a segue to another community, whether it's a, a FWB. Gitcoin, any of the other DAOs like in, in the space that we, we've been talking about, right? So yeah, that's that's my best explanation. But uh, I think that 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 mission that we've landed on in the past few weeks is like has me reinvigorated and, and super super excited. Yeah, no, and that's actually really illuminating because I think when most po when most folks think about forefront, it's like pretty much just like analogous with like social tokens. Mm -hmm. But it seems like you guys have definitely opened the aperture of like what you uh, want to cover and what you want, like what your mission is. Yeah. And so has that like changed in terms of like the dynamics of the people who've came in to learn about social tokens and now they feel like this, this new mission is just like a lot broader and a lot more like, you know, amorphous? Yeah. I, I think it was the opposite. I think what ended up happening is like the type of person who's interested in social tokens in the capacity that we were, that our community was like exploring it is also interested in all of these other topics that are analogous to social tokens, right? Um, and in that way, like, it was in, in typical DAO fashion, rather than like there being a very concrete mission and we're coordinating to like achieve this thing and that is it, it was very emergent. Like we had a value system, we had like things that we knew, knew that we wanted to do, but like the long-term vision was very open-ended. And we just wanted to make sure that we were getting dope people in the door who had that same level of curiosity, who had that, those same values for like education and onboarding people into the space. Um, and then we, we just went from there, right? So like it, it, it very much was not an intentional decision to say like, hey, like we want to like open up our scope so that like more people come in. It was more like people came in and, and pushed the scope out um, yeah. in a way that like made it more inclusive for, for all of those ideas. I think that's really awesome because social tokens, like what you mentioned, are definitely very blurry in terms of what they actually entail. Um, and it's awesome that like you're, you're again, like opening that, that, that aperture, right? And so now that you have this new vision, um, like what is in your mind like a good end state for Forefront? Is it like a education hub? Is it like a media company? Um. I feel like what we've learned is that if we try to come up with an end state, we're doing, we're doing the DAO an injustice, right? Like the goal here is not to come up with an end state. The goal here is not to say like Forefront is going to be X in, in three years time and we are going to like hit these KPIs. Um, I think the goal is like as we are experimenting, as we are working on projects and as we are like working in line with the mission and values that we've set, um, we just continue to like keep an eye on like where things are going naturally, and then we just double down on those things that keep the community excited, right? Like we're 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 trying our best to keep the community community excitement as like the number one thing that is guiding what we are doing on a regular basis, um, and that might mean that like in two years' time, maybe the forefront newsletter is no longer a thing, right? Even though that's like the number one thing that's getting people in the door right now maybe that's no longer the thing that like A, the community is excited about and B, is like achieving the goals that are in line with our mission of like onboarding people into the, the social token and DAO space, right? It, it might be that like it's, it's cohort-based courses or something like that, I don't know, that, that are the, the route that A, the community is excited about and B, that's like that are actually valuable, right? So in that way, um, we're, we're definitely leaning on this more emergent mission and I, I also think, like, I was having a conversation yesterday with somebody um, around this idea of, like, is it really a DAO if you set the vision from day one and then, like, person 100 who joins the DAO kind of just has to, like, go with it, right? Like, do you really have ownership of the organization if the vision was already set and you kind of just came in and you were like, yo, like, I'm in line with this vision. Let's, let's do it, right? Like... Yeah, that, that, that's cool, but I think what's cooler is like getting to come in, whether you're member one, 100, or 1,000, and having like the same level of, of influence over what can happen in the organization, right? And obviously, like as the DAO grows, there are like you as an individual have like proportionally less influence, right? But like you still have the same amounts of opportunity to like 
influence and, and change the DAO in your vision as everybody else does, right? Yeah. And so, first of all, that, this is like blowing my mind, which is like super awesome. Um, you have to have a really good finger in the pulse of what your community members want because to your point, you want to be flexible about what the, what the contributors uh, want to see from the DAO, right? And to your point, like being a contributor is more than just doing something. It's resonating with, or it's, it's reshaping and co-creating the vision of what you want to achieve, which is really cool. Um, you know, I know your, you know, your involvement in, in Forefront has a lot to do with like community involvement, mender activation. Like, what are ways that you like personally uh, like keep your finger on the pulse of like what the contributors want? Yeah. Um, so there's like some tactical things we've done and some things that like I, I just try to do on a regular basis. Like one tactical thing is like we started a community tea time and it's like every Tuesday and we just hop on Discord and like the voice chat um, and we just vibe. Like for like 10 minutes there's like guild updates. So we have three guilds in, in Forefront. We have the Writers Guild, the Culture Guild, and the Growth Guild. Um, and they all kind of like serve like core functions and, and like do their best to like decentralize those functions across the community. Um, but after those 10 minutes where people kind of like give their updates and say, hey, this is what's happened this week, we just talk about like, what are we excited about? What happened this week like more broadly across the DAO? Like what are people excited about in the space? Like what are projects that people are working on maybe independent of Forefront and how can Forefront sort of get involved? Like where, where, is, where is their alignment? Where is there like an, an intersection in the Venn diagram, right? Um, and those conversations, like, at first we tried to have an agenda, like the first two or three times we did this, we said, we're gonna talk about X, and then we're gonna talk about Y, and then we're gonna talk about Z. Um, and those conversations sucked. Like, they were, they were trash. Um, nobody was talking. Like, there was absolutely zero excitement. Um, people would, like, drop off the call after 15 minutes. It was really, really bad. Um, and then once we, we landed on that, that model of, like, we're gonna do guild updates so that everybody's on the same page as what's been happening, and then we're just gonna vibe. Like, that allows us to really keep a pulse on like what people are actually excited about, not what they feel that they have to say because they're on a forefront call, right? Um, and in that way, like, we've learned a ton about like, A, what internally people are excited about working on. Like, like the other day, Rafa wrote a, a really dope article on like what we call contributor zones, um, which is the way that we're thinking about contribution within like the forefront DAO. And, we, we mentioned it as like something that happened in like during that week, during the recap. Um, and like that's not something I would have thought to put on the agenda. But during the tea time, people were like, we want to talk about that essay that Forefront just put out because we think it's like really, really important to like the future of how we're thinking about like the structure of the DAO, right? Um, and that became like a half an hour conversation and it was really, really valuable and we learned a ton and we learned a ton about the, how the community was thinking about that thing despite the fact that that was like, that wasn't an essay that was published outside of the community. That was like from the community but like not everybody got the chance to like give their input on that particular topic yet. So like, I'm, I'm rambling but it, it's things like that and then there's, there's other ways that we're, we're keeping a pulse like um, in our onboarding process we do our best to have like one-on-ones with every single person who is, is getting onboarded. Um, that's really slow, and we're we're trying we're probably going to change that soon. But like figuring out a way that there's like a human connection um, in every single onboarding process that isn't just like yo we're gonna we're gonna get 30 people on a call and and talk to them about forefront like that is valuable. We're definitely going to do that. I think like the cohort based onboarding, but like there also needs to be that personal connection. Like it, it's a lot easier to to get involved and like voice your opinion when you have that one person that you can go to that's like hey. I want to talk about X or Y isn't sitting right with me. Like we we should, but I I don't want to voice it to the entire community yet, right? So little yeah. things like that. Yeah. To your last point, like there's been all this conversation around like oh like do DAOs scale, especially mm -hmm. re in regards to onboarding. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting some laughter, uh, and like I think the I think at least for now the beauty about DAOs is almost like the hyper like the hyper micro communities that we form that don't scale, right? That's like the magic of it. Uh, and, and to form those one-on-one -on -one relationships. Um, if people wholeheartedly disagree, you can trap me after, after this panel. Um, do, would you agree with that statement? Or like, are you thinking about ways that, you know, when Forefront is, you know, 20, 50, 100, you know, con like 100,000 con contributors, like, do you want to keep that kind of like micro, um, 
like feel to it, the one-on-one relationships, or is it going to is it going to change? Yeah, I. So, I have this this thesis, I'll call it, um, that like most people are using social tokens wrong, um, like most, including Forefront right now. Um, we are using a social token. <laughs> like we are using a social token as an internal coordination mechanism for the people that are in like the forefront discord, right? And, and we're calling that a DAO. Um, and like whatever your definition of DAO is, we can, we can fight about that later. But like um, we, we basically like have an organization and then we like plop the token on top of it. I think that's like the reason there's so much debate around like are ERC20 is valuable, like should we actually have social tokens, maybe we should just have NFTs, yada, 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 is because like most people are doing that and like using social tokens wrong. I think where Forefront is trying to go um, and where I hope most DAOs go is you have like a core pod, squad, whatever you wanna call it, that is sort of like setting the mission, setting the vision, and like maintaining like the core elements of the DAO. So like in Forefront's case right now, that would be like the newsletter, the like the, the Forefront product, the marketplace and all that stuff. Um, and like there's a, there's a team that's kind of working on all of that. And then everything else that's happening in Forefront right now is still like somewhat centralized. Like right now, if, if you wanted to spin up a project on Forefront and have a proposal, like you have to do that within the Writers Guild. There's, there's a little bit of bureaucracy there just because like we're trying to keep like a quality bar high. Um, but like at the same time, we want to enable everybody to be able to work on those projects whenever they want. All of that is to say, I think there's a world in which what ends up happening is like Forefront is a token that has like a core set of values attached to it and like a core mission attached to it. And people can use the Forefront token as a coordination mechanism, like permissionlessly. Like they could say like, yo, like I think this project is like related to Forefront's mission and I'm going to use Forefront token as a means of like coordinating with like other members of this ecosystem that are also using Forefront token because they're coordinating with the mission. Um, and they might not be in the same Discord and they might not be, like they might not have had contact with like the quote unquote core Forefront team but by nature of using the token, they're coordinating towards a core set of values like within like a broader community. Gotcha. Right? Um, that's very vague, ambiguous. Who knows what like the, the practical application of that will look like. But I, I, they were just talking on stage about like these like, smaller sub DAOs and, and how like the coordination between like smaller sub DAOs is, is probably going to be the way to go. Um, and I, I would take that one step further as to say like the DAO is really just like a bunch of these little pods coordinating around the social token and the social token embedded within the social token is like a core set of values and a mission. Um, and like that entire ecosystem, which may overlap with other ecosystems um, of like sub DAOs or small pods or squads that are coordinating around the token, that's the DAO. That DAO doesn't necessarily need to live within the same Discord, it doesn't need to live within the same Telegram, whatever whatever it may be, but like that's that's what I would define as the DAO, right? Um, we're not there yet, but that's that's where I think Forefront is headed, and that's where I, I hope the space is headed at large. Yeah, so just so I'm playing it back and fully understanding this, um, you're saying that social tokens are kind of like a, you know, some sort of like economic primitive for folks to align towards a set of values as opposed to right now it's more related to like the brand of a particular organization and their like internal microeconomy is that right yeah okay. yeah i think that's like like rather than I guess what I'm trying to say is like rather than like a core team or like a, a set of core contributors, rather than that being like the locus of control for like the broader organization that we call the DAO, I think the token itself is the locus of control, right? Like there, there's, a, there's a core set of values that's put out and there's the token. Um, and then everything else kind of like coalesces around this thing, right? So yeah, I, I'm, I'm, bullish on forefronts and I am excited to continue working on forefront because I think that is the direction that that will go and like I think what will happen first is like it'll happen at the guild level like right now like on a, on a day to day my job for forefront is like running the writers guild right so like f heading into season two one thing that I'm thinking about is how can we just like just completely like 
kill the process, kill in a good way, not a bad way, like not get rid of. Good kill. Uh, <laughs> good kill. Um, but how can we like really nail the process for like the writer's program so that we can crank those essays out and the newsletter and then just treat everything else as an experiment? And I could say like, yo, Rafa and Chase, you have a project proposal, throw it up on the forum, we'll get approval, you get a budget, run with it, right? And then you have like weekly check-ins with like the guild at large just to see like how you're doing, right? Like that's the level of like distributed work that we want. Um, and then if like at some point we're like, yo, this is really, really consistent output, this has become like a core part of what Forefront is doing, we can kind of like bring that into the locus of control of like the, the guild, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's step one towards like that decentralization process. And you're saying right now the guild is very much like, for lack of a better term, like top down, right? Yeah. It's like there's a high, like there's like some sort of like quality bar. Yeah. That is. At know, the end of the day, in the arbitrary. guild, like everything goes to, like through like me and like the core contributors of, of the of the writers guild, right? Like I can say like, we don't want to do this project. Um, and it, it, not necessarily because it doesn't align with the values. I could just say like, I don't think this is this is something we should work on, right? Yeah. Um, I want to get to the point where I can't say that. Like, as long as it aligns with the values, like, the community can vote on it, and, and, and bam, go for it. And then, like, that's an experiment that, like, would run within, like, the locus of control forefront. Gotcha. Um, I want to table that for a sec and revisit something you said, like, 72, now three seconds ago. Um, you were talking about how uh, you want social tokens to be, like, again, this, like, permissionless financial you know, incentive uh, towards this, like a set of values. And then when I think about what you said, you know, many more seconds ago uh, around, you know, Forefront being kind of like that gateway Web3, there's a few DAOs that also have that mission, right? FWB comes to mind, obviously, a little bit more of a subset towards creators, um, or sorry, creatives rather. Um, how do you like reconcile that du duplicative, like, value set, right? Yeah. This is this is a really good question. Um, okay, so two things that come to mind. First of all, I don't think that, I think we should be thinking about like the broader ecosystem as very flat. Like, I don't think any any community should like go out and say, I want my token to be like the base token that all other tokens kind of like fall on top of, right? Like I, I think that's like really defeating the purpose, right? Like we, everything should be collaborative in nature um, in a way that like allows for overlap but also allows for like distinction. Um, so like that's, that's like principle number one. Given that though, there, there's obviously going to be over, like different DAOs are going to want to work on different things, right? I think the two things that'll sort of like solve this problem of like overlap are like A, people being very explicit about like, this is the mission of the DAO and this is why it exists and this is what we're working on and this is what the token stands for. And I think like virtually, like most DAOs have not done like the best job of that because that's really freaking hard, right? But like making that a continuous process and trying to nail that down as much as possible will allow DAOs to say like, hey, this organization is doing something really, really well. This organization is doing something really, really well. Yes, we want to touch these things and have our hands in those pots, but like, here is how we differentiate ourselves, right? The second thing, though, is like, I think, I think, and this is this is less of a, a developed take, um, but I think communities will like naturally differentiate themselves based off of like the values that they 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 collectively develop. So like. What I mean by that is like, you've got FWB, by, by nature of FWB and like the people in FWB interacting with each other on a regular basis and like working towards like their collective missions, like that's a very emergent process that like will inevitably lead to a very unique culture and set of values that FWB stands for that no other DAO can stand for because no other DAO has that exact same set of like experiences in the community that led to that point, right? Um, and in that same way, like Forefront may start off with like a very similar, I, I, I mean, I, could, I can get into why I think it's different right now, but like we could say like a very similar mission at the top level. Um, 
but like that mission is going to continue to develop based off of the experiences of the unique community that Forefront has and the unique set of experiences that we are pushing forward, right? And given that, it loops back to like the first thing that I said, that given that those experiences are unique and therefore like the mission is going to be unique, you just need to do a really good job of trying to flesh that out and articulate that as much as possible to rally people around that on a continuous basis, right? Um, so it's like this, this cyclical process of like, like emergent factors and then articulate what happened. And then like you see what, like you vibe and then articulate and then vibe and then articulate and, and go Feedback loop of vibing. Yes. I like it. Um, so like if I, like let's say, you know, we're three, five years down the line and like I want to uh, like have an initiative where I'm incentivizing people to um, participate, like to build towards the vision that Forefront and another like social token or another DAO would have. Um, like how would I, you know, what is like the framework that I would need in order to like reward people for like an, a Forefront token versus like another token? Can you repeat that question? Yeah, it's just like, if, if you look at like different tokens and like kind of like on that paradigm you're talking about where it's like these tokens align towards certain values and you want people to permissionlessly use this to incentivize people to build towards those values, like how do I think about like a holistic pot of like social tokens to incentivize people with? Uh, I see, I see, I see. Um, well, I think like on, on one hand, like going back to the point I just made, like there's a burden on the communities themselves to like make it clear as to like why you should rally around their particular token, like when and why you should rally around their particular token, right? Like if, if you're interested in X or working on Y, like you should use Forefront token, right? That's, that's on, like an onus of, of the community itself to articulate that. On the end users side of things though, like you do your best to like figure that out and then you choose and then you like, just like it's an experimental process, an iterative process for the DAOs, it's also an iterative process for like the people who are using the token. You might realize that like in working with the token, you're running into a lot of coordination friction where like the, the others who are coordinating around that token aren't necessarily in line with like your particular values, right? And then you might say like, okay, maybe Forefront is it for me, maybe I wanna go F the FWB route, right? Um, and that's okay. Like as these values and as this, these missions become more and more articulated, We'll, we'll end up seeing that like people will be okay from switching between like token to token, community to community, um, and and that's part of like this like, this iterative emergent process. Yeah, I totally understand. Um, well, thank you for letting me pick your brain, man. It seems like four friends doing some awesome stuff. Give a hand for Jihad, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jimmy.